Hi, I'm Tim Johnson, Senior Editor at American Woodworker Magazine, and today I'm going to show you how to mill wide stock flat and to thickness using only a planer. You might ask, isn't that what a planer does? Well, not exactly. A planer is designed to mill stock to a consistent thickness. That's why it's sometimes called a thickness planer. It isn't designed to make boards flat. Look at this rough sawn board. It certainly isn't flat. Running it through the planer will smooth both surfaces, but it's not going to make the board flat. Here's the rest of the board. Now you can see I've run it through the planer, and you can also see it still isn't flat. Milling a rough sawn board flat and to thickness usually requires two machines, a planer and a joiner. A joiner is a machine that's designed to mill the face of a board flat. After you've used the joiner and milled one face of the board flat, you use the planer to mill the other face of the board to the thickness you desire. So you end up with a board that's flat and uniformly thick. This board is too wide to fit most joiners, so we're going to have to use the sled to flatten it. The trick is to stabilize the board on a flat surface called a planer sled so that when it's fed through the planer, it can't rock back and forth. You can make a sled using a single piece of MDF, but gluing together two pieces of MDF will make your sled more rigid. If you do decide to glue two pieces together, make sure you glue them on a flat surface, such as your workbench. An easy way to do this is to spread a coat of glue on the first board and then fasten the second board with countersunk screws. After you've put the screws in, apply weight to keep the board flat against the workbench until it dries. Make sure your sled is sized so it'll fit in your planer and long enough to completely support your board. Glue a stop onto the front end of the sled so that the planer's pressure rollers will keep the board pressed against the stop as you feed the sled through the planer. Orient the board to cut with the grain. I mark the edges of the board to show the grain slope. Planing this direction is with the grain. Planing this direction would be against the grain. Use shims from the hardware store to stabilize the board. Now this board has a significant twist, so it's a good idea to stabilize both ends at the beginning so you minimize the amount of material you're, you're going to remove. Install the shims under all the gaps. Because this has a twist, we're going to be installing shims on opposite ends and opposite sides. Make sure the board doesn't rock. Fashion the shims to the sled and to the board using hot melt glue. Let the glue cool, then check the wedges to make sure they're fastened securely, and then cut them flush with the edge of the sled. Now the glue looks like it's creating quite a mess, but actually, once you're done planing, it's easy to remove because it doesn't stick to the MDF very well. Provide in-feed and out-feed support when you position the sled for planing. Set the planer to make a very light pass. It's very important on this first pass not to cut too deep. It's really just a staging pass to make sure the pressure rollers are engaged. Lock the planer and you're ready to make the first planing pass. Make additional passes to flatten the surface. 
Notice how each pass is only removing material from the high spots. Once I flatten the surface, I can remove the board from the sled, flip it over, and plane the other side to thickness. I don't need the sled for this step, although it's reusable because the wedges will pop off easily. I want to mention that here we've shown how to flatten a wide board, but you can also use this technique to flatten glued up boards.